Welcome to module 7. In this module, we are going to discuss on heat exchanger and a heat exchanger is a device in which exchange of heat between a hot fluid and a cold fluid takes place. Okay. Now, in the first lecture, this is the, that is the today's lecture which is the first lecture on this module, we are going to discuss first on the various type of heat exchangers. Actually, in the module of heat exchanger, we are going to discuss uh, various types of heat exchangers, then we are going to discuss various design methodologies uh, for heat exchangers and then uh, we will take up some problems to demonstrate how to apply those the various methodologies. So, in series of lectures subsequently we will be discussing all those. To start with in the very first lecture we are going to discuss on the various types of heat exchangers and as you know that heat exchangers can be classified uh, as uh, there are four types uh, depending upon the various cases. First thing is that uh, type of contact. So, uh, then there is a type of construction, type of flow arrangement and type of surface compactness. So, we can classify heat exchanger uh, based on the different uh, uh, views based on the uh, uh, different type of uh, situations like type of contact means that how uh, the uh, hot fluid and cold fluid uh, whether they are in contact or not. So, it depends upon that that this is divided into two parts that is called direct contact and indirect contact. Uh, here in, in the in case of direct contact that hot fluid will be in touch with it will be in direct touch with the hot fluid will be in direct touch with the uh, cold one and uh, indirect contact there will be a barrier. Similarly, uh, the type of construction how the heat exchanger is being made we will see all the descriptions we will be seeing in details like tubular, then plate type, then extended type, extended surface heat, heat exchanger and regenerative. Already tubular heat exchanger there can be these are the most important one the double pipe and cell and tube and there are some spiral tube heat exchangers and then plate types and then extended surfaces in the and we have already discussed to some extent on this that extended surface transfer that the application of fins on the surface of the heat exchanger and then regenerative where that a uh, heat is being uh, taken uh, taken up by some uh, material and then being uh, used uh, used up again uh, by the uh, other fluid so it is a kind of regeneration that means heat is being used it is being used to increase the energy of some material from a from a fluid and then that energy again will be used up by the another fluid uh, uh, from the uh, material so this is regenerative and then we have that the then again the type of flow arrangement, flow arrangement can be uh, 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 single pass, multi pass we will discuss all this and there can be parallel flow, counter flow and so on, cross flow all these things will be uh, there. So, they, they are common to each other again and then type of surface compactness some of them are called as a compact heat exchanger, some of them are non compact heat exchanger. For example, that we know that exchanger surface heat exchangers are usually a compact heat exchanger whereas, uh, plate and frame filter uh, heat exchanger is also a compact heat exchanger whereas, cell uh, heat exchanger or simple double pipe heat exchangers are not called as a compact heat exchangers. Anyway, so these are the various types of heat exchangers uh, classified in the de depending upon their uh, issues like uh, how they are contact, how they are in contact, how uh, what is the construction pattern and how they are constructed and then what is the flow arrangement of the fluids. So, what is the uh, surface area uh, for this. Uh, heat exchange. So, depending upon the uh, various parameters, okay, the heat exchangers can be classified. Now, what we will do is to start with, we will first see uh, that uh, 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 type based on type of contact, there are two things one is the direct contact and other is indirect contact. So, to start we will see that direct contact heat exchanger. Now, direct contact heat exchanger means that as we told as I told already that uh, the hot fluid and the cold fluid will be in direct uh, contact there will be no separation or there will be no barrier between the uh, two fluid streams. Okay. Now, it is uh, many a times it is used like for example, uh, uh, like a very common use for us is that in cooling tower, in cooling tower the utility water is cooled by contacting with upflowing air. 
So, what is being done in this case? Utility water is cooled by contacting with up flowing air. So, that is one that air and water is in direct contact and they are exchanging the energy. So, this is the heat transfer that is being taking place. So, this becoming a case of direct contact. Similarly, in case of some evaporation, uh, the vapor from an evaporator are condensed uh, vapor from an evaporator is sometimes condensed by cold water. So, this is became uh, is becoming in the uh, direct contact because from the evaporator it is nothing but water vapor that comes and it is if you it would put directly the uh, evaporator vapor uh, into the uh, uh, water water a cold water case then it will be immediately condensed. Similarly, the cases of some hot oils sometimes are directly cooled hot oils are sometimes directly cooled okay, um, with cold water fine and there are so in addition to this so uh, there are some other cases like say distilled fatty acids uh, typical example of distilled fatty acids are cooled with water so in direct contact uh, and then uh, sometimes then another thing like uh, heat exchange in case of say packed plate so or fluid based fluidized plate so uh, heat exchange sorry in packed plate or fluidized bed the heat exchange between solid and fluid. So, this is not only in packed bed or fluid base in the not only in case of in, in uh, any kind of solid fluid operations where the, the fluid is in direct contact with the solid. Okay, typical example is it will also is your adsorption or any other reactor, pack bed, distillation, uh, all this fluid to a reactor. Everywhere there is uh, some kind of heat generation, so some kind of temperature difference will be there in the solid phase and the fluid phase, and then there would be some amount of heat transfer that will take place. And this heat transfer is also again an example of direct contact heat transfer. Now the point is over here I would like to say that then. Uh, the advantage there are certain advantages of the direct contact heat transfer. The advantages of the direct contact heat transfer is that uh, that uh, uh, it avoids the extra resistance of the boundary or the barrier. So, avoids the extra resistance sorry of the barrier between the fluids. So, we have a hot fluid and a cold fluid and if we put a barrier that which is the case for uh, indirect contact heat transfer uh, under that situation uh, if the extra barrier will give some additional uh, resistance uh, for the heat to be transferred. So, by using the direct contact situation we can uh, we can reduce that uh, extra resistance, but uh, that advantage though this is the advantage, but there are severe disadvantages uh, when you go for a direct contact. So, so, disadvantages are that mixing between 
two fluids. Okay. So, when uh, we will go for the uh, direct contact, then the, the fluids will be mixed and if the fluid uh, these two fluids are mixed up and if they are not separable, then that is the uh, major problem for us. So, even as I like as we have given the examples of uh, oil in water uh, or cooling of oil by water or air cooler in only places what we have seen is that, uh, that the two phases are separable. So, one phase can be separable with the other and therefore, uh, that type of situations uh, 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 direct contact can be useful, but in other situations direct contact cannot be made to be used. Okay. So, we have to see that when uh, fluids are easily separable, okay, then only direct contact is useful, otherwise it becomes uh, difficult uh, to use direct contact heat transfer for uh, transfer of heat from one fluid to the other one. Okay. So, now that we will see that most of our chemical engineering applications uh, we will see that uh, indirect contact uh, heat exchangers are, are uh, mostly used that means, uh, there will be a barrier uh, between the hot fluid and the cold fluid and to start with we know the very common uh, uh, one is that very important one is that a double pipe heat exchanger and uh, the here a typical uh, uh, sketch is given for a double pile heat exchanger and we can see that in this double pipe heat exchanger what happens in case of double pipe heat exchanger there will be two concentric pipes are there you can see that this is the this is the inner pipe this happens to be the inner pipe and this is the the bigger one is the outer pipe and this inner pipe and the outer pipe uh, inner pipe they are all uh, usually coaxial in nature Okay. And then what happens you can see from here that, uh, uh, that this inner pipe uh, and then between the outer pipes, these outer pipes are connected uh, by certain uh, flange arrangements and the inner pipe there is uh, a bend of the inner pipe that is being seen here and uh, this, is, this is called when, when we have this kind of arrangements like that there is a bend and then again it is coming to the other side. So, this way that is a, is a U tube kind of things or helical arrangement of the inner pipe. This is sometimes called as uh, hair pin arrangements. So, we will say that some important points for, for double pipe heat exchanger. Important points are that the uh, fluid flows through. So, I should say fluids flow through flow through tubes slash pipes and they are coaxial coaxial um, and then what happens is uh, uh, coaxial and uh, also you can say that and concentric Okay. Now, what can happen that outer tube, outer one acts like a jacket okay, uh, of the inner one. Now, the uh, very important kind of consideration is that uh, the hairpin construction. is uh, most important. So, this hairpin construction means as I told you that uh, that means it is like a uh, hairpin uh, and then it takes another bend and the log it goes on like this. So, one hairpin is connected with the uh, other hairpin and that that grows like this way uh, one by one it is connected and this way what we can do is that we can have a stack of such hairpins uh, making uh, are giving us a lot of room for the heat transfer that means, lot of surface area uh, can be generated like this way. Otherwise, if we uh, do not bend the tubes or pipes 
then what will happen is you have to take a, a very straight length, long length of the tubes would be necessary, which is totally impractical. So, to make, make it a practical one, the tube long length of the tube has to be coiled and this coiling is in the form of, of a hair pin. Okay. So, some U bend will be there and it happens like that. So, now what happens also you can see from here that some part of this, this bend, bend of the uh, tube, whatever is seen this the bend of the tube, uh, this can be uh, this bend of the tube, uh, inner tube may be, uh, may be surrounded by the outer jacket or may or outer pipe may not be. So, if, if, if this is not surrounded by the outer jacket, then we can say that this part is not involved in any kind of heat transfer uh, between the two fluids, but the other part is involved. And important thing over here is that uh, because of this uh, bending of the tubes, we may have to put uh, 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 some extra thickness for these uh, U tubes, because otherwise what will happen for these tubes, because otherwise uh, what will happen that while bending, uh, it may thin, it may be thinned in such a way that uh, it may not last for a longer time, it may not be withstandable uh, uh, with respect to high pressure. So, we have to, the, the design of this uh, tube thickness has to be accordingly, we have to take care of this bending uh, action on the tubes. Now, what I was telling that air, air pin construction is the most important for double pipe heat exchanger. Now, in addition to that, we can we should say that uh, double pipe heat exchanger is usually being used for a low heat duty in case for low heat duty situation. That means, when we have uh, uh, less amount of heat to be transferred, less amount of fluid is to be handled, all these situations uh, uh, double pipe heat exchangers are normally used and the low du heat duty means the range we can say the less than 500 kilo watt in this range. And then uh, a packing and gland arrangement is uh, near the inlet and exit ends of the hairpin assembly. Okay. A packing and gland arrangement okay, near the inlet and exit ends. Okay, of the air pin assembly provides a ceiling to the annulus and supports the inner pipe. It means, suppose we have these. So, this portion otherwise here in this region there should be a, uh, a packing arrangement and gland arrangement otherwise what will happen? The material will go out. So, this and this also support the tube also. So, this is what is being meant by that particular uh, point and we can see that the flow arrangements in this case. So, it can go like this, uh, this is the tube side flow and this is the cell side flow. When the cell side flow is like this, then it becomes counter current. So, it is in the opposite direction and uh, if, it, if it would have flown like this or if the tube side flow is like this, then it is in the counter uh, co current uh, position, the flow will be in the co current manner. Okay. Now, uh, also we can say that opposite ends are joined by U bends. Okay. That means, this is what is being said, you can see there that this portion is the U bend and that is a separately joined here. So, this is the tube, this is another tube and the U bend is joined with a flange arrangement, U bends are joined with a flange arrangement. Okay. That is easy construction actually for the tubes. Then, um, we can say uh, opposite ends are joined by U bends and the joint is through union and 
uh, welded joints. Okay. Then there are more things like um, that as I told you that U bend may or may not be uh, outside uh, outside the jacket. Okay. That means, that if we see that in this figure, we have shown that here the U bend is outside the jacket, that jacket does not cover up that part. And so, while we will be doing the heat transfer calculations, we should see that that part is not being included while doing the calculations. Okay. Then, uh, as I told you, the flow through double pipe heat exchanger okay, can be parallel flow, also it is called or uh, parallel flow or anti parallel flow. So, this is again that also they are called counter or co current flow, counter current flow. So, this if I so we know that, that if we have a tube length of this kind this is a length already we have seen and this is another situation this is the station 1 and this is station 2 this is station 1 and station 2 and these are the temperatures in this region if we say this is temperature and we know in case of parallel flow uh, or if I say this so this is this is the case for this is the temperature profile for hot fluid and this is for cold fluid which is heated up in the same direction they are flowing and we know that this is the case of uh, parallel flow. So, this is hot fluid again and the cold fluid this is the case of anti parallel flow not parallel flow it is the cold fluid. So, this parallel flow this is the case for also it is called a case for parallel flow also called as co current flow and this case it is called anti parallel flow counter current flow. also it is called counter flow. So, different nomenclatures are being given for this kind of situations. So, we can say that uh, in, in double pivot exchanges it will be mostly it will be mostly or uh, rather it will be almost a perfect parallel flow or almost perfect anti parallel flow or counter current flow and also if we if we can just see that in this region when there is a bend region if there is a heat exchange in this region, then here the flow is not uh, perfectly parallel or perfectly anti parallel or counter. If that if the jacket continues to cover the bend also and the, if the heat transfer takes place in those region also, then it will never lie, it will never remain this portion will never remain as purely parallel or purely anti parallel. So, this portion will be a mixture kind of there kind of there can be some kind of cross flow kind of situations will be there because the directions is not. Uh, exactly being because there is a change in, in the radius of curvature. So, it will not be perfectly parallel or perfectly anti parallel flow. In other cases when there is a straight pipes are there, when there is a straight pipes then it, it are there are the cases of perf perfectly parallel flow and perfectly anti parallel flow. So, when there is uh, uh, the case when it is not perfectly parallel or anti parallel then uh, we will see in case of cell anti heat exchangers uh, later on that there will be some corrections to be used correction in the sense because uh, we have to find out in case of heat exchanger one important parameter that is called driving force. Driving force is the temperature difference and this temperature difference is, is, is being called is usually being found out with the help of log mean temperature difference I think I have discussed with in, in some lectures uh, uh, much earlier that uh, log mean temperature difference can be calculated the expression for log mean temperature difference can be estimated uh, can be uh, found out 
uh, by doing some uh, theoretical analysis and we have found out for parallel flow and for counter flow how the uh, how the expression for log mean temperature differences are ok. But this log mean temperature difference though it is used as a driving force for heat transfer, but that, that cannot that may not be a perfectly useful for all situations and, and we may have to use it with little caution by using some correction factor. We will be discussing this in uh, uh, some subsequent lectures. Okay. Now, uh, next part what we are going to do uh, is discuss is that uh, direct indirect contact heat exchanger and the most common one is that cell and tube heat exchangers. So, this, this diagram this diagram shows us that uh, a typical diagram of a cell and tube heat exchangers and a cell and tube heat exchangers which is a most commonly used in chemical uh, process industries and, and, and we feel that uh, a, a chemical engineer should be uh, very much comfortable uh, with the uh, kind of design with all the all the parts all the uh, issues related to cell and tube heat exchangers. So, uh, it is it, it should be uh, discussed in detail and we, are, we, are, we will try to discuss the cell and tube heat exchangers in a little uh, detailed. So, if we see uh, look uh, look onto this picture, we will see that it consists of several parts. So, we will go by one by one part and try to see that the what is what. First part is that cell. So, in cell of tube heat exchanger what is happening is that a tube bundle if you first see that a tube bundle. So, these are all tubes these are all tubes ok the tubes are being placed in some cells ok and we will see that to so start with there are several things first one is the cell. So, cell means it is a bigger pipe cell is the uh, enclosure uh, and uh, through which uh, the cell side fluid passes ok. So, cell is an enclosure of tube bundle and allows the passage of cell side fluid. So, therefore, in case of uh, cell and tube exchange both the fluids will call a one will call as a tube side fluid another tube another one will call as a cell side fluid. In case of uh, double pi heat exchanger one could be called as the annulus fluid another will, could, will be called as the inner tube fluid, but here the cell side fluid and the tube side fluid. So, in the cell uh, cell is usually a, a bigger in size when the cells are uh, very big for big size cell it is being done how it is being fabricated that it is it's, it's a metal plate is rolled over to give a cell and then uh, welded uh, in the uh, axial direction. So, a metal plate is rolled uh, the plate is under uh, heat treatment it, it is in thermal uh, treatment. So, it is hot and then it is rolled and after it is roll, rolled to a diameter of of a specific size whatever we require and then in the longitudinal direction or in the axial direction uh, this is get welded. Okay. And so, that, that the metal sheet that metal plate which is being taken to ma make the uh, cell uh, should have uh, uh, that uh, uh, calculation is a simple calculations the th width of or the breadth of the metal plate uh, should be equal to the length of this uh, cell and tube exchanger and uh, the uh, length of the metal plate will be equivalent to uh, pi into d 2 pi r basically. Okay. And when uh, the selection of uh, uh, that uh, if the diameter is less than 60 centimeter then uh, a pipe of suitable thickness can be used. Can be used as cell. So, so this is what from the construction point of view. So, cell is a bigger uh, uh, diameter pipe 
that pipe is made either by rolling up a metal plate and then doing a welding or by uh, just cutting a bigger suitable size pipe uh, piece okay that can be used as a shell and the shell purpose of the shell is that it will be the uh, tube bundle will be placed inside and uh, the, it will help to passage uh, help the, uh, for the passage of the uh, cell side fluid and then the material of construction also very important for this uh, cell side fluid material of construction MOC the it is usually carbon steel is a very common one okay is very common material of construction now this material of construction is definitely dependent on the operating conditions and also the fluids to be used so operating conditions operating condition means temperature pressure these are main operating conditions particularly the temperature is very important because the fluid uh, reactivity or the corrosion behavior of one fluid on uh, on a metal surface depends on uh, particularly the uh, temperature okay and then uh, the fluid type of fluid to be used so the most important part has to be is to see that uh, the fluid which is used which is used for heat exchange sh which is passing through the cell side uh, should not corrode the cell side surface okay that is what is of importance now this is the cell so and then next part is the tubes that is very important so we can see that so we can see that the uh, tubes are of naturally of very lower in size and they are uh, they are uh, uh, placed in seed inside the uh, cell now how the tubes are placed uh, this this tubes are the basically the uh, they provide the surface area of the heat transfer because as we understand the tubes are walls of tube walls okay tube walls separate the two fluids and act as uh, surface for heat transfer between the two fluids ok ok and uh, fluid flowing through the tube is called tube side fluid called as tube side fluid ok and then usually the material constructions used in this case uh, carbon steel then stainless steel then cupro nickel copper brass aluminum etc and again that a choice is depending on moc choice of material construction depends on the application that means again we should say that operating conditions and the type of fluid to be used ok now uh, many a times uh, fin tubes are also used we have discussed previously fin tubes are also used to increase 
the surface area. And this finning is uh, can be longitudinal film tubes, it can be radial film tubes, usually the uh, longitudinal film tubes are uh, very common in this kind of situations. But uh, most of the chemical engineering applications they uh, do normally use simple tubes not even the fin tube. Fin tube heat exchangers are usually called the compact heat exchangers and we know when to use the compact heat exchangers, heat exchangers already we have discussed, but it is again to say that uh, when there is a heat transfer coefficient between the uh, fluid and the wall surface is very less on the that situation. Uh, what you have to do is we have to increase the surface area because if you know if you see that q is equal to u a delta t and this this is u is the u is the heat transfer coefficient okay and delta is the temperature difference and this a is becoming the area of heat transfer sorry area of heat transfer. So, if I have three possibilities in my hand to see the heat transfer rate okay, that q dot if we say heat transfer rate to see the heat transfer rate I have three possibilities one is u that is heat transfer coefficient I can increase. So, but I have some limitations we know that with increase in Reynolds number heat transfer coefficient can be increased, but after we reach the turbulence region then further increase in heat transfer coefficient is not possible then delta t driving force that the temperature difference, difference it is normally it is uh, decided by the external world how much uh, temperature changes I can do uh, that is already being defined it cannot be uh, done by infinite difference in temperature cannot be uh, made cannot is not possible it is already defined by the external world. So, the remaining possibilities is that area of heat exchanger while we have discussed that uh, fin heat exchanger that uh, fin type. Uh, heat exchanger that we, uh, 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 we have discussed extended surface heat transfer that time we have discussed that area is the only possibility by which we can uh, largely uh, change the heat transfer behavior of heat exchanger and of a heat transfer surface. So, therefore, uh, that in case of when there is a heat transfer coefficient is less for some fluids solid system particularly here uh, air uh, to, to some solid surface the heat transfer coefficient is very poor under that situation we may have to use uh, increased uh, uh, area and that increased area is only possible by putting the fins and that ultimately in turn uh, looks like a compact heat exchanger where as you have seen that that uh, it is some some definition is given that uh, 700 meter square per uh, 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 that the very beginning. Yeah. 700 square meter square per meter cube uh, if the surface area density is like that if surface area density is less than 700 square meter square per meter cube then we can we call it to be compact otherwise we call it to be uh, non compact otherwise we call it to be compact heat exchanger. So, this is uh, a just just a typical uh, information about that. Now, let us come back to our uh, tube side uh, uh, regarding the details of the tubes. Now, tube sizes there are some standard sizes of the tubes are available uh, for the heat exchangers. So, this is usually 3 by 4 inch, 1 inch, 1, 1 by 4 inch, then 1, 1 by 2 inch. So, these are the uh, typical sizes of the, uh, the tubes. Now, narrow tubes if I want to use narrow, narrower tubes are used for smaller heat exchangers and uh, with and when working with uh, clean fluids because the important point is uh, if the fluid is dirty if the fluid is dirty and we are using narrower tubes then what is the possibility is that narrower tube uh, the clogging of uh, by the tube 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 holes will be clogged uh, by, by the uh, darts and therefore uh, the flow rate will be drastically reduced and there will be huge amount of pressure drop that will be occurring 
okay so that will really uh, create a large problem big problem in the flow situation on the, in the heat exchanger okay and then tube thickness it is usually governed by uh, birmingham wire gauge bwg this tube thickness is dependent on on various factors these are uh, operating pressure then we have uh, corrosiveness of the fluids fluids to be handled and then uh, thinning of tube wall during bending thinning of tube wall during bending so this is particularly the case when you have u bend cell and tube heat exchanger u bend type heat exchanger okay now length of the tubes are pretty standard um, 8 feet 12 feet 16 feet 20 feet 24 feet these are sorry these are standard lengths standard lengths other lengths are also used okay and then now the arrangement of the tube tube arrangements that's very important so how the tube is arranged so this is called uh, based on the pitch uh, that is it is called square pitch already we have discussed and this is called triangular pitch square pitch arrangement and triangular pitch arrangement in case of square pitch arrangement that is like this so this is a square and the center to center distances if they are joined this leads to a square okay and the triangular pitch usually is a if the center to center distances are joined then it gives an equilateral triangle equilateral triangle and usually these angles are 60 degree and 60 degree triangular pitch is a very common this is sometimes also called as 60 degree triangular pitch and is very common and we can see that this distance the center to center distance this is called the pitch pt square pitch and this portion is nothing but the clearance c c is clearance okay similarly here this is the center to center distance this one is called pt that the triangular pitch pitch of the triangle so center to center distance between two tubes is called the pitch whether it's a square pitch or the triangular pitch in both the cases these are called pitch and in square pitch these angles are 90 degree okay and it makes it square and in this case it makes it a, it's a tri uh, triangle and the triangle is a usually an equilateral triangle is being formed that means they are at 60 degree uh, angles okay and that we know that there are certain situations that if we say the square pitch versus triangular pitch Uh, what happens it is this is in this case uh, particularly for triangular pitch is favored because here uh, we can say more 
heat transfer area this is more heat transfer area per uh, for a fixed cell in comparison to square pitch ok and then we can also say that uh, in this case the pressure drop is more due to more turbulence and as a result what will happen is that therefore, more heat transfer coefficient is achieved. But in case of square pitch, uh, what is happening? It is an easy cleaning operation. as compared to triangular pitch and we can say that less pressure drop ok uh, uh, and, and less pressure drop and heat transfer coefficient as compared to as compared to triangular pitch arrangement ok. Now, what happens is that uh, the next important point is that, that the tubes how they are fixed in the cell if you see that the tubes are placed inserted into this, these are called tube seats. So, these, these are called tube seats. So, tubes are placed in the tube seat. Okay. So, these tubes are placed in the tube seat. So, so you have uh, certain holes in the tube seat and th through which the tubes are placed okay. and uh, then what happens is this tube seat can be it is very important to know about the tube seat. These are circular and then thick. Also, it is called sometimes called as the tube plate. Okay. So, circular thick metal seat. Okay. So, they are used to hold the tubes at both the ends. Okay. Now, these tube seats can be fixed may not may not be fixed. So, when fixed with cell called fixed uh, head sorry cell and tube heat exchanger and it may be floating then we call it to be floating head. So, when both both these tube seats are fixed when both the tube seats are fixed at the two ends with the cell then we call it to be a fixed head cell and tube heat exchanger and when one is fixed and the other is floating and the other is floating then we call floating head uh, cell and tube heat exchanger ok. Now, the idea behind this is that uh, that tube seat also will have
have the layout layout means either triangular pitch or square pitch tube should have should have the layout and accordingly the tubes will be inserted into that okay and uh, then the next part is that that floating head is used one side is flo made floating the reason behind this is that now when there is a thermal shock that means when there is the uh, thermal shock or big difference in cell and tube side fluid temperature can be adjusted by the floating head arrangement okay if you see again the fig, uh, figure we will see that yes here we can see that 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 the projected part it is here in this case it is remaining as a floating head and you can see that this portion is not fixed the other side is fixed one side is fixed and the other side either it can be fixed head or it can be a floating head con uh, considerations when it is a floating head that means it can it can move laterally so there is a lateral movement is possible uh, of this head so uh, there's no when there will be a temperature difference that can be adjusted uh, by this head therefore it's called floating head this side is remaining as a floating conditions okay so this is uh, now uh, this is something about that uh, uh, different parts of the heat exchangers uh, there are many other things that has to be discussed now i'll pu i'll i'll put a simple problem say uh, what would be the uh, equivalent diameter for square pitch and and triangular pitch arrangements okay so this is now if we try to see uh, as already we have discussed this is the square pitch sorry and this is the triangular pitch okay so in this case as i told that this is the pt and here it is the pt center to center distance and uh, we know that in case of square pitch uh, what is the equivalent di uh, diameter d equivalent if we say it is equal to 4 times the hydraulic radius and that is equal to 4 into flow area hydraulic radius is defined as flow area by weighted perimeter okay so in case of quadrative arrangements so for square each so d e equivalent will be equal to 4 times flow area is we know that uh, flow area would be equal to p t square minus pi d square by 4 into 4 sorry so we can understand that this is the uh, if pt square is there then is the uh, this is the area of the channel through which it can flow but it is being covered up by these portions are being covered up so these portions are nothing but 4 into uh, 4 into uh, this is one quadrant because it is 90 degree this is 90 degree this is one quadrant of the total area of the uh, uh, tube so that means 4 multiplied who gives you 4 quadrant that means the it is the area of the tube so cross sectional area of the tube is important so this cross sectional area will be that if do is the outer diameter of tube 
then it will be pi d o square by 4 ok. And then what will be the weighted perimeter in this case? Weighted perimeter is again the first quadrant is pi d naught by total tube perimeter is pi d naught ok, pi d naught 2 pi r into L per unit length if we consider. So, this becoming now 4 into such. So, it is becoming now uh, pi into d naught that is becomes the flow, flow area by weighted perimeter. So, in case of square pitch arrangement and in case of triangular pitch. Uh, so, d e equivalent will be equal to 4 times. Now, we see that uh, flow area, flow area is the is a, uh, equilateral triangle. So, the height of the equilateral triangle is given by root 3 by 2 into p t that will be the height this is h and so area of the triangle will be uh, half into p t into root 3 by 2 p t that is the area of the triangle ok minus minus this is 60 degree. So, this is angles are 60 degree ok this angles are 60 degree. So, what will have 3 into 60 degree 180 degree that means half of the area covered by the tube. Fine. So, this will become now 4 into uh, half into root 3 by 2 into p t square half that means root 3 by 4 into p t square that is the area of the triangle equilateral triangle minus the area half of the area of the tube that is pi d naught square by 8 pi d square by 4 is the area of the uh, tube divide 2 this is the flow area and divided by weighted perimeter again in the similar fashion weighted perimeter will be the half of the uh, perimeter. So, it will be pi d naught by 2 ok. So, this is become the uh, equivalent diameter in case of triangular pitch arrangement. So, I will stop here again uh, in the next lecture we will continue with the same thing uh, that we will see that how uh, different parts of the cell and TV exchangers and various other type of exchangers we will discuss. In, in another one or two lectures and then after that we will see how to design the heat exchangers. We will see some problems and we will see some methodologies, some uh, how to and uh, calculations procedures. Thank you.